everyone, welcome back to another video. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to time travel and fix all your mistakes so you can have the perfect life where you're rich, Bruh. famous, and you don't need anything from anyone? So have I, but I can't make it happen. But this guy made it actually, allegedly made it happen. We are talking about Mark... Mike Markham. <laughs> because that name is freaking hilarious, okay? Mike Markham is this guy right here. He's a goober, an actual mad lad. He supposedly, supposedly, made a freaking time machine. And he went missing. He disappeared from the face of the earth. Mike Madman Markham talked about his experience with industrial power transformers and his attempt to build a time machine with the host of the Coast Coast radio show. All right, so you, 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 now you really may be making a time machine. Now this is pretty cool. Have you got that part of it built? Uh, the electromagnet? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Do you know it? I don't. Uh, wanna explain in the comments below because I will not do my research on this topic. Uh, <laughs> He explained that he took six transformers to power a time machine because I think that would have been enough. You definitely don't need a nuclear power plant to do that. Can you can you feel it in the air? It feels weird already, okay? It feels suspicious. This is sus. Uh yeah, no, he he's insane, dude. Look look at this face. This is the face of someone, someone who doesn't, doesn't receive Christmas, Christmas presents, okay? okay? Fatherless behavior. During his second appearance on Coast to Coast in 1996, one year later, he stated that he was 30 days away from finishing his legal time machine. And you jump. And then what? Well, long story short, it feels like I got hit with a flashbang and I wake up and I'm 800 miles east of there and two years later. Last time I checked by the constitution of the US, it isn't illegal to build a time machine. So I don't know what you're talking about, buddy, but you seem crazier by the second. It does not appear that there is proof of what happened to the device or to Markham. He has now become the subject of true crime podcasts. Oh, that's a great community, you know? But I would definitely do A to your I mean, isn't he missing, supposedly? Well, we are about to find out, because this video, actually, that I haven't had the opportunity to watch yet. So, we are gonna watch it together, and we're gonna try to understand what happened to Mike Markham. Did he really travel through time? Did he really disappear? Or is he among us? Mike fired up the box, and the lasers came to life. The machine produced a small, circular area of distortion, it was a vortex about eight inches across that looked like ripples above a fire. So he grabbed a sheet metal screw and tossed it through the field. It vanished. Then he heard something clattering. It was the screw. It rolled to a stop about two feet from the box. Mike thought he invented some kind of teleportation device. He didn't. Michael Mad Mad Markham invented a time machine. You gotta, you gotta appreciate when someone can say the word come without laughing. You, you, you then know that they are adults, unlike me, because I'm laughing. <laughs> I can't help it. If you have that last name and they did bully you, I'm so sorry, because that's what would happen. It's a fact, okay? It's just a fact. Finally, we jump into the real thing. Oh my god. Mike Markham from Stanbury, Missouri, was an amateur inventor who liked to tinker. He lacked formal science training, but he had a natural aptitude for electronics. His current project was a Jacob's Ladder, a device that consists of two metal rods, which start close together at the bottom and spread apart as they go up. I don't know what does it look like, but it definitely does look like something that I don't want to stick my d to. So if I can't stick my d into the future, what's the point? Okay, what's the point? What's the goddamn point? Okay, pretty but standard. I had an idea for a modified version of a Jacob's Ladder. The first thing he had to do was create a transformer. To get the arc of the electricity going in a Jacob's Ladder, you need a high voltage power supply, typically in the tens of thousands of volts. Now, in the United States... So you need a lot of power. That's what you're saying, I guess. You... you, you but, you know what I don't get? Like, you are tinkering with electronics and you're like, oh yeah, you know what? This electricity, this like lightning bolt right here. Yeah, I'm gonna build a time machine with this. The standard household oh. voltage is 120 or 240 volts. That won't do. So Mike built his own transformer. And now that I see it in action, I kinda wanna stick my finger into it. You know, just like... And die in the process because of course I'm gonna die. What's what's the the other outcome? So Mike had an idea What if he used lasers to heat the air around the conductors 
This would lower the air resistance, ionize it, and make the spark ignite on its own. At least, that was the plan. Let me guess, something went wrong. <laughs> Let me just stop you right there, buddy. Something went terribly wrong. It was from a couple of CD players, connected his homemade transformer, and fired it up. No spark. It didn't work. As he was going to disconnect the machine, Mike saw something strange. Hovering above the device was a sphere of distorted air. It looked kind of like the wavy mirage you see over a highway on a hot day. Uh. This wasn't some powerful ball of energy. Unsure what this thing was or if it was dangerous, Mike tossed a sheet metal screw into the energy field. The screw disappeared. Now, Mike didn't know if his machine was teleporting objects or possibly sending them a few seconds into the future. After a few more tests, the machine overloaded. Let's say for a second this is true. You have like your thingy, have your thingy here, your vortex of energy here, and you're like, mm, this is weird. I'm gonna toss sh into it. Besides, this is a normal machine. I, I doubt that anyone uh, hasn't tried to make this, okay? It's just like something that you can replicate and you can have in all of YouTube. The lasers were dead and the components were fried. Now, even though all that was left of Mike's invention was a burnt out box of parts, he knew he was onto something. Now he wanted to go bigger. Scaling up the parts of the machine wasn't a problem. Bigger conductors and even bigger lasers you, were available. If you're gonna put an image and make it readable, dude, editor, please help me. Just grab the, the I'm, I'm seeing it right here. You have it right here, okay? It's easy to get. The problem was power. He'd need transformers that can handle 50,000 volts or more Why? without breaking a sweat. Basically, he needed the kind of transformer you see on power poles. But those are not easy to get, and they're not cheap. Yeah, uh, that's what we talked about. He stole them. He stole six transformers. He knew there were six industrial-grade transformers just sitting in a yard doing nothing but getting rusty. But that I... yard was a substation for the King City, Missouri. Oh, so they weren't doing nothing. They, they were there for a reason. <laughs> hey, Sam, how did you get those PlayStation 5s? Oh, they were just sitting there doing nothing. So I took them. What? No! <laughs> the power company. So Mike called a couple of friends with pickup trucks and in broad daylight drove to the substation, loaded up the transformers and drove away. He went full freaky Mission Impossible style, like broad daylight to pick up trucks. A few weeks later, he had his next version of the machine. The transformers were connected to the grid, new lasers were in place, and the wire hanger conductors were upgraded to yeah. four foot long, half inch metal rods. This I thing imagine. was a beast. Now, the moment of truth. Mike powered up the machine. There was a loud crack, a spark, and then nothing. And the machine worked. It created an energy field or vortex a few feet wide. So Mike sent objects through the vortex. But this time, objects weren't reappearing a few seconds later. Where's they the weren't proof? reappearing at all. The objects were just vanishing to who knows where. One afternoon, Mike had a few friends over and they were tossing small objects into the energy field. Because that's just what you do, you know? You create a freaking teleporting device and you're just like, Hey guys! Uh, we're gonna throw some bullets into the weird vortex, you wanna come? Oh sure, my guy! They wondered, could a big object go through? A few of Mike's buddies got behind the living room couch and pushed. The couch went... This is the most redneck thing I've ever heard in my entire life, okay? I'm, I swear to God. ...into the energy vortex and was gone. For stealing the Transformers and stealing power, Mike Markham got 60 days in jail and five years probation. Guys, I have to take a break. I have migraines and this one is actually killing me, so... It took almost 18 years, but Art Bell was finally able to catch up with Mike Markham. Honestly, Art thought Mike was dead. And I called you Madman because I was convinced you were going to absolutely fry yourself alive and turn into a french fry. There are other people who have been involved in time travel, uh, Mike, that I've had on the show. I mean, he looks, how to say it nicely, bad shit crazy. Oh, and honest to God, Mike, they're gone. But Mike, go on, Mad Van Markham was very much alive, and a lot had happened since the last time he and Art spoke. Because of Mike's last appearance on Coast to Coast, he suddenly had a lot of benefactors. He had a little money, equipment, and lots of power. 
Mike I want to know, aware. you know what I want to know? That, that this video and this channel doesn't appear to be given to me. The source. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be giving me much of a source. Uh, I guess it's all just... I'm not gonna say made up because we never know, you know? The most successful version used rotating magnets. So instead of having a small energy vortex, Mike was able to create what he called a plasma tornado. Maybe it would be more efficient if I use, uh, instead of using uh, basically heat from a laser in a cold room, the differential, the, the temperature difference between those two to stir the plasma, maybe even more efficient if I used the magnetic field to stir it. That's what I ended up doing. In simple terms, this thing looks like a, basically a plasma tornado. So how much is, is that a real thing that can happen? I don't think it is. I'm sorry, I'm so skeptical about this because uh, it really feels like they're making this up as they go. Yeah, a plasma tornado is a thing that happens actually. In the freaking sun! Well, remember Mike's first machine? That prototype ran at 20,000 volts. This new machine in the warehouse, which is about 15 feet tall, it was pulling 3 million volts. But several scientists said that if building a time machine was possible, Mike's technology was on the right track. Because Einstein's equations do allow for time travel. And they're blueprints. <laughs> blueprints for different kinds of, of time travel design that are compatible with Einstein's theory. For example, gigantic spinning cylinders. You go around the cylinder and you come back before you left. So now Mike started testing the machine by sending objects through the vortex. First, with small objects. Uh, where's the proof? I want to see proof, pictures, video. There is nothing. If you would support it with uh, a shitty video, I would still watch it because that would be interesting and would support your theory. But this doesn't do any of that. Hello, hi, how you doing? I'm recording this the same day this video is supposed to go up, but I found a video that says supposedly that this is the Mablan Markham's machine or something. There's sound. There is no sound. It's big spark. No vortex of energy. No plasma tornado. No time travel. No Madman Markham. It's like bits of wood, baseballs, and little things like that. And they went through just fine. But they just disappeared. The objects would go in and vanish. And then about two minutes later, they reappeared. But the objects ended up between 50 and 150 yards east or west of the machine. I and always it. east and west, never north or south. Mike thought this could have something to do with the Earth's rotation or magnetic field. And look, I know the story sounds crazy. I don't mind it. But these tests were witnessed by 15 people. Anyone who donated... Where are the witnesses? I'm just gonna look it up because if you're not gonna give me any information, I'll give it to you, okay? It just let's look it up. There is nothing. There's nada. Zero. Are they all dead? Did they all disappear? We will never know. Where's the source? Where is the source? Where is the goddamn source? <laughs> let's keep watching. Chill. Did money or equipment? Mike Great. let them be a part of the project. And those people showed up. I would have too. And it's a good thing there were so many people on hand. Hamsters are fast. The tests were so successful that Mike started sending small animals through, specifically mice, hamsters, and Why? guinea pigs. Between the inanimate objects and animals, Mike had successfully tested the machine about 200 times. Well, throw it yourself. Like varying the voltage and the speed of the magnets could adjust how far objects were traveling. So at this point, there was really only one final test to try. Do you mean? Yep. Mike stood in front of the vortex, took a deep breath, and jumped. There was a flash of light, and Mike disappeared. He was just gone. I think he just went down for a walk in the forest, and he just got lost and eaten by wolves. When Mike came to, he was not in the warehouse. He was lying in the middle of a field somewhere with the worst headache he'd ever had. Where are you getting this from? And there was a big problem. He had no memory of how he got there. He didn't even know his own name. So he got up and just started walking. If he didn't even know his own name, how are you telling this story? Are you making it up? Are you asking ChatGPT to make a story about Mike Markham? Because I'll do it. Eventually he oh, hit okay. Fairfield, Ohio, a suburb of Cincinnati. And Fairfield is 800 miles due east of the warehouse in Overland Park, Kansas. But Mike had no driver's license or ID of any kind. No credit cards, no money. 
so he went to the nearest homeless shelter to grab a meal and get his bearings. When he got to the shelter, he saw a newspaper. He had jumped two years into the future. Ah! Mike took a few odd jobs and got together enough money to take a bus back to his warehouse in Overland Park. When he got there, the warehouse was empty. Everything was gone. The machine... Dude, the, the guy just did shrooms, went to, for a walk and walked like 800 miles, woke up there and he realized he wasted two years of his life high on shrooms. Sheen, all the videos that he took of each test, all his notes, every bit of documentation was all gone. Could have been the men in black or it could have just been the landlord who thought Mike was gone. So he just stole the equipment or threw it away. Now, Mike was pretty sure he could recreate the machine. He felt he could remember 90 to 95 percent of the process but it would take a lot of money. The equipment in the warehouse was worth a couple of million dollars. A couple million dollars? Excuse you? But Mike still had memory gaps. He couldn't remember whose donors were. His list of supporters was in the warehouse. And that brings us to Mike's third appearance on Coast to Coast. He caught Art Bell up on everything that happened. And although he wasn't looking for money, once again, people were ready to help. So Mike had options and Art Bell encouraged him to mm. keep working. All right, everybody, that's it. Everybody in the world wanted an update on Madman Markham, and now you've got it. He's not going to stop. What's next for Madman? Only time will tell. <laughs> and Mike Markham would continue his research and continue to experiment. Mike wanted to travel again, but he needed to bring things with him. So when he woke up, he could quickly get up to speed in case his memory failed again. A big problem he kept running into was that nothing metal could go through the vortex. Well, metal could go in, but it was unpredictable. Sometimes... Didn't we start the story with uh, him throwing in metal screws and sheets? I'm seeing huge gaps in this story. I thought like this was gonna be just something that actually might be plausible, you know? Why? Why did I get myself into this? This metal would come right out like those sheet metal screws, or sometimes the metal would explode in a shower of sparks. But after some trial and error, Mike discovered that if a metal tube was built a specific way, it would act as a Faraday cage. I know, I know, I know where this is going because I read the article. Here, I found it. One of the outlandish tales involves someone calling the Coast to Coast Radio claiming that in the 1930s, a long time ago, almost a hundred years ago, police found a dead man on the California beach crushed inside a metal tube. How is it that he traveled back in time, but the first time he traveled forwards in time, we will never know. Meaning that the tube could travel through the portal and reappear undamaged. Plus anything inside the tube would be unaffected, including metal. Doubt it. So Mike continued to document his work and built a pretty large following online. One day, Mike posted that he was ready to go through again. Where? And this time he would go through inside the tube and he'd take his cell phone with him and that was the last anyone had heard from him. As always, Art Bell kept tabs on Mike and was disappointed to hear that he was gone again. To where or when, nobody knew. And look, Mike Markham doesn't bring much personality to the story. No, not But at all. Art knows enough about electronics and physics to keep us in the loop and all the technical stuff. And Art Bell never condescended to his guests. He never ridiculed them. Well, that's He made them good. feel comfortable because Art knew that that's the face of a man who knows what he's doing, definitely, and it's not crazy and has like 15 bodies buried in his backyard, definitely. That's how to get the story. I just wanted to end. <laughs> I think this is one of the reasons why The Y Files has success with these topics, where many other channels don't. I don't have to believe a story to enjoy it, and if you believe... No, of course, but what I'm trying to say is, if you're gonna tell a story and claim it to be true, give the source, give information, pictures, something, there is nothing. That's a nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the f*** up. Not a single picture of the machine, even though there was supposedly backers, founders, people that were giving money and were attending those things, they would have definitely snapped a pic 2015 and before. You have cell phones already. Did Mike Markham ever travel through time? Probably not. There is no proof. There is no evidence. We have nothing. Did Mike Markham build a machine? He did build a machine. I doubt that this ever happened. If you think it did, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to have a discussion about this, actually, because it's fun.